Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Glenn with DIY Creators and today we're going to be making a trip over to the table saw. We're going to be making a sled for that. Really simple using your existing miter gauge and you can take the same concept and build a full sledge sled. Now the best part about this is the footprint that it actually takes up. All you want to do is just take your miter gauge and attach it to it, detach it from it and you can actually just find a place to mount it to your table saw. And we're going to show you just how to build that so let's get into the video. As you can see here, I have two sheets of three quarter inch plywood that sandwiched together. I'm gonna first start by cutting off one of the rough ends, then I'm gonna run it through the table saw and hope to create a straight edge. After making the first pass, I'm gonna sit the plywood on top of the table saw just to see if I got a straight edge. And since I didn't see any gap, I'm gonna trust that this is accurate and now I'm gonna make my second pass cutting the plywood down to the desired size. And after measuring, I'm gonna take this over to the miter saw and remove what I don't need. The sled is designed to use the miter gauge and I need to take the thickness of this because I'm gonna duplicate that for the opposite side of the sled. And to assist me with this, I'm using a digital caliper. I'm gonna use this because I think this is the best method to get that pinpoint accurate measurement. And when you make a measurement, using a caliper seems to be the most precise way to get the right and correct spacing between the saw blade and the saw fence. And this tool gives you three points of measurements. One, you can see you got depth. You also get inside and outside measurements. Since I've already ripped the width of the track, now I'm gonna do the depth of the track and I'm gonna mark this so I don't cut it the wrong way. And when you're cutting a piece of wood so thin like this, you wanna stay as far away from the blade as possible. So use scrap wood or whatever it takes to push and guide the wood through the blade. As you can see, the wood is flush with the top and it doesn't interfere. Now place the fence in front of the miter gauge and square that up with the blade. The next thing you'll want to do is take a piece of scrap wood and sit that on the back side of the fence. Now mark the track on the opposite side of the fence so that it's flush with the front side of the fence. Now cut the track to the line so that this piece will sit at the bottom side of the fence. The next thing you'll want to do is find the center of the fence, then put a mark on it. I want this to be centered with a saw blade, but this is all based on preference. You could always have this favor to one side. And I'll square this up once again and clamp the fence to the miter gauge. And this way everything is in a fixed place and I can focus on drilling the two mounting holes. Now first I'm going to start by drilling a couple pilot holes so I know exactly where to drill it. And even though I started off drilling freehand, it's always best to use tape or a collar so you don't go all the way through. Next take a larger bit to open up the hole for the inserts. And the more I use these, I'm really starting to fall in love with them. I really love these inserts. They just seem simple and just seem like a no-brainer to use. Now, if you're going to be assembling and disassembling like I would be doing here a lot with this setup, this is probably the best way to go because I have thread in place and I'm not necessarily ruining the wood. And using these threaded insert over the T-nuts, these also leave you with a cleaner surface on the opposite side. Next, I'm going to jump to the other track on the table saw. I'm going to place a piece of painter tape down within the track with the sticky side facing up. Now, the small piece of track that we cut earlier, I'm going to add glue to that, then place that on top of the tape. Now, place the fence on the track, then take the other piece of wood, sit that in place as well, take the tape, and lock the three together. Now, this way, when you clamp it all down, I can lift the track out and everything is together. Then I can flip it over and add a few screws. And since I'm working with such a small piece of wood, it's a must that you pre-drill this so that you don't split the wood. Now I do believe adding a scrap to the back side of the fence makes sense because it actually gives me more space to add another screw and also provide more support. My initial plan was to just mount the T-Track to the top side of the fence. But when I got to this point, I realized it just made more sense to flush it within the wood itself because it would just look a whole lot cleaner. Now, after I made the first pass, I dropped the bit a little more than I dropped it for the final time. So I made three passes. Now, the router bit I'm using here is the perfect size for this size T-Track. But since I hit a screw with a previous project, this tapered the end of the bit and don't allow the proper width. Now I do have a second bit, the problem is I can't find it and I need to get the moving on this project. So I'm just gonna take the chisel and remove the jagged edge. So at this point, I can now move on to sanding down the project, removing all the sharp ends on this thing, all the plywood splinters, and round over some of the corners. Now I attached the T-Tracks and I was happy with that, but then I just thought that I wanted to put some shellac on here because it looked a little plain and I didn't like the way it feel with the rough texture on it. So I just added some shellac, sand it down with a couple coats on it and I was happy with that. Now 
Now the assembly process is pretty simple. Just drop it in place and tighten up screws. And you always want to make sure that you double check for squaring that everything lines up every time you cut just so that you're cutting accurately. Now because I forgot to put my safety glasses on as I made a first cut through the table saw, I did realize that sawdust was pretty much flying at my face. And that's when I decided to add a piece of plexiglass on top. But then the problem is my stop would get in the way. And that's when I had to go back to the drawing board again and decided that I wanted to add a hinge so that I can make that flap back and forth so that I can get it out the way. Now if you've ever installed a hinge before, you know how much of a pain it is to install a screw right in the center of the hinge. And that's where these bits come in. They're made for that and it actually works out really well. I'll have links down in the video description if you want to check those out. So the nut on the screw needs to go down inside the wood when the flap is down. So I'm going to take a frosting bit or a larger bit and drill down into the wood. But I got to keep in mind that right below that is the two screws that I just installed. And I want to make sure I don't interfere with those. Now the good thing is here I can see right through the plexiglass and then I know exactly where to mark the two holes for the hinge. Now I'm going to trust that I marked those holes well enough. I'm going to pre-drill them and then open up the hole big enough for the screws to pass through. And now to assemble this, you want to make sure you keep the plexiglass on top of the hinge. Then you want to install the nut and also the screw. And at this point, you can tighten them up and lock them in place. Now I need to find the center and mark it so that I can line it up to where the blade come through the fence. Next, I want to flip it over so that I'm on the back side of the plexiglass. Then I want to mark where the two screw holes is going to be. So for me, I'm not going to make this so that it's permanently attached. Now, if you don't feel like there's a reason to detach it and you want to keep it permanently in place, then you could always do that. Just use wood glue. But for me, I want to be able to take it off at will. And with the pre drill holes already going through, just mark the fence and then open those up so that you can install the threaded insert. And these just make it a whole lot easier to attach and detach anything you want. And just make sure you install them and screw them in all the way so that the top of it is flush with the surface. Now you can butt this all the way up to the fence, but because I had these plastic washer that came with a TV bracket. Now let's say you like this feature and obviously you may not have these plastic washers. What you can do is just use a piece of wood in each corner, glue those on as spacers so that you do get the light coming in from the side. But you can also look down and see the blade exiting out the back side of the fence. Now adding the T-Track and the stop to the fence just make it more convenient because everything is in one place. And if you want to take that a step further, you can always add a tape measure on top of that just so you have accurate measurements. Now as you can see, I didn't allow the stop to come down any lower or make the fence any shorter. And that's because if I wanted to in the future, I can always add a piece of plywood here and that way it's future proof. Just keep in mind if I wanted to make repeatable cut that's lower than the actual stop I have here, I can just add a piece of wood in place, clamp that down, and then I can just go to work. If set up correctly, you can get accurate cuts every time. If you've never used a crosscut sled before and you own a table saw, these things are awesome. They're probably the best way, if not the best way, to make repeatable cuts on a table saw and you don't have to worry about kickbacks. Now one of the best thing about this particular setup is the footprint it takes up in your shop. This one basically you just break it down or you take it off your miter gauge and then you just store it anywhere. You can actually just attach it to your table saw. It's always better to show than to just explain. So I'm going to show you how you can use this to make a dado joint and just how simple it could be. Now if you have a dado stack you can always make two of these. One for your regular blade and then one for your dado stack. Using a standard table saw blade, you can see that this require a bit more of an effort to remove all this material. Now what you want to do is you want to make the two outer cut first and then work your way in the middle and just remove all the pieces an eighth of an inch at a time. At this point you have removed as much as you could, so all you need to do now is just clean out the dado slot using a chisel. Now just drop the piece of wood into the dado slot and here you have it. And we're back. I'm going to tell you all the things that I like about this and then also the things that I think can be added as an addition to this. Now obviously if you want to add the piece of wood that sit on the surface of a table saw as well, you can totally add that onto it. The other thing I would add onto it is adhesive tape and that way you can have easy measure outs when you're doing repeatable cuts. 
Another positive I have on here is the dust guard. I don't always grab my safety glasses as I didn't while I was building this and the dust went flying at my face. So, you know, that really helps out and I think it'll be a great addition and you should totally add one if you happen to make this. Now, what's actually nice about this thing is the footprint it takes up. I think that's the biggest catch and the biggest positive here is that if you have a small shop or if you don't have a place to store a lot of jigs and all those extra pieces, I think this may be a solution for you that you can literally just attach it to your table saw, put it on top of a cabinet, put it in a drawer that's big enough to house it and I think it's really also great for the small shops and it's also great to have on a job site, especially if you have a job site saw and you need to make cross cuts on the job site, then this, a solution like this may works out well for you. If you find these videos helpful, support me over on Patreon, Patreon slash DIY creators. That way you guys can help me create more content. And that's it for this one, guys. If you like this project, then smash that thumbs up and let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so that you get notified every time we upload over here. And oh, by the way, I've been working on my signature exit. I'll see you next time.